Let's see, uh, we got some people joining in right now. All right, so welcome to everyone that's joining. We're still waiting for uh, a few more people to join in. I know uh, when we hit that button to join, we usually have a bunch of people coming in. There we go. Now we're starting to see the flood. All right, so um, just to let everyone know, uh, we are also doing this live on YouTube. So if you guys are interested in the recording after this, you can find us on YouTube on Lumi Wealth, right? So basically search, uh, you know, youtube.com, search for Lumi Wealth, that's L-U-M-I-W-E-A-L-T-H, and I'll actually post this, uh, the recording into our chat right now so that you guys can all have access to this. This is where uh, you guys will be able to see the recording. Um, uh, if you actually click on that link, you'll see that this is currently live. Um, make sure that also when you go on our YouTube channel, they subscribe to us because we do lots and lots of free stuff. We're going to be sending out lots of free, um, you know, educational things and uh, updates about our technology and all sorts of really cool stuff. So make sure you guys subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things heading your way uh, over there. Um, so subscribe and also hit that little bell to, to get the notifications. All right. Um, we're probably still going to have a few more people joining, but I think it's probably a good time to get the ball rolling so we don't have uh, anyone waiting uh, around. So, Greg, do you want to take it away? Sure. Um, so, guys, thank you, everyone, for joining our uh, webinar here. Um, I like to try to keep this interactive. So, um, as... Um, as Robert mentioned, um, you know, feel free to go into our chat. We also have a Q&A section, um, so you guys could see that. So here's the, the basic agenda. Um, uh, one thing is, it's always, you know, as a presenter, it's always good to know the audience. So if you guys can um, uh, kind of uh, talk about that in the chat. So I'll, I'll, I'll go into that on our next slide. Uh, we'll go into introductions um, and then uh, machine learning based forecasting. So this is kind of like why we're all, why we're all here. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, I'll talk about some of the training returns that you could get using machine learning, the tools that we'll be using, um, some of the code. I'll, I'll be giving a demo. And then talking about the course um, for machine learning. And throughout this, we'd like, to, we'd like to encourage you guys to ask questions. So anytime you have questions, just you know, please, please, you know, just post it into the Q&A or chat, mess, chat um, dialogue. So, um, so what would be helpful is, if you guys can go into our chat and just you know, uh, put in what your occupation is. Um, uh, if you know how to program, you know, just mention that. And then just in terms of how much investment experience do you have. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll kick this off, right? So, um, so I'm, I'm gonna tap in the chat. So actually let me change this to all attendees. So let me, let me do this. Um, so, uh, I'm actually a tech founder, uh, I'm an L ML expert, and uh, I'm a recovering, um, recovering day trader. I have, I have quite a few things going on. And then, yes, I do know how to program. And, you know, I, I've, been, I've been trading since, I don't know, since finished college, well, for, you know, for decades, basically. Okay, so I, I just didn't want to get the, the ball rolling. So if you guys could do that, that'd be great. Um, it'll help kind of um, let me know um, more about the people on this call. Okay, um, so um, let's see. Actually, Robert, do you want to introduce yourself first or should I do that? Uh, sure, I, I can introduce myself. Um, I, I also, um, so we, we got that one person, Haifisu. Um, so he has a background in finance, but just started learning programming. So that's, uh, thank you for letting us know. It's awesome. Very helpful. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, I, can, I can let you guys know who I am, but this is definitely much more about you, Greg. Um, but I'll let, uh, I'll let the audience know. So my name is Robert, uh, Robert Grosick. I'm the CEO of Lumi Wealth. I've uh, been running this company for about two years now. Uh, I also teach the algorithmic trading course. So if you guys are planning on taking both courses together, you'll have both Greg and myself uh, that uh, we will be teaching you um, different parts of of this journey, right? Um, my background is I've been coding for a little over 20 years now. Um, I, was, I was one of those like 12 year old kids that started to learn how to code, you know, um, not to give too much away about my age, right? <laughs> uh, 
but uh, yeah, so uh, been been coding for a long time. Um, started a few different tech companies throughout my life. Um, some of them went quite well, um, including uh, the last company I was at, uh, which is a company called Voyager, where we um, built a crypto trading uh, broker. So very similar to Coinbase. Uh, that company uh, we started um, in, in a WeWork when nothing existed, and now it's worth three billion dollars trading uh, on the market, which is pretty damn cool. Um, Got to admit. Um, also, I have a master's in finance. I've worked on the, the Wall Street kind of game for a while, uh, mostly on the tech side and, and hiring uh, lots of software engineers and running running software teams. So that's kind of my background. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually me... remember you, Haifisu, by the way. As I'm just re responding to uh, to a chat here. Yes, and I do remember you. Your name when your name came up, you seemed very familiar. So this is a good thing. Yeah, I definitely remember you. So. Um... So let me um, let me uh, uh, go run through the rest of this. Um, and first, let me introduce myself. So Greg Tanaka. So I'm the instructor for the machine learning course. And um, so native Californian, uh, into Caltech, Berkeley, um, studied computer, uh, electrical engineering, computer science. Um, did a lot of different things. I, I designed GPUs. I was a product manager. Um, um, did a lot of work around um, machine learning. Um, on, on um, Kaggle, which is kind of like a uh, machine learning competition uh, website. <laughs> I'm one of the higher ranked people on there. Um, and um, I've also uh, started a few companies. Um, my current company, and I'll talk to more about that later, is called Pika Group. And what we do is we help day traders uh, automate their strategies using machine learning. So I'll get more to that later. And then uh, Luma Wealth, um, as Robert talked about, is really you know, one of those wonderful um, services out there to help educate people more about how to get more of their financial future in their hands. And, um, and basically what, um, what, uh, what his aim is, is to really, you know, there's one thing to get people a fish or to teach people how to fish, right? And, and what Lumen Wealth is trying to do is trying to teach people how to fish. So you can actually do algorithmic trading yourself, uh, which is really cool. And I'm, I'm doing kind of like the specialty machine learning um, version of that. As Robert mentioned, we have a group, there's a really great uh, YouTube channel. You should check it out, uh, the Luma Wealth. There's a lot, a lot of really good content. And um, something that we, we, if you guys haven't uh, done this already, you should go to the Discord channel. And I'm almost blown away. I'm on there right now. But it's almost blown away by how much um, chatter there is on there, right? So this is, um, it's kind of like a, a mini version of um, Wall Street Bets, but I think, uh, but I think the people on there are smarter. So you guys could learn from each other. So definitely check out the Discord channel. And then um, Robert- I, I put a link it. up there, by the way. I put a link in the chat if you guys want oh. to join. You just got to click on that link. Yep, just uh, click on that link. And then, um, yeah, so there's people talking about, you know, crypto, talking about stocks, talking about algorithmic trading. Um, it's, really, it's a really great place to meet other people and, you know, kind of vet different um, algorithmic trading ideas. So- um, yeah, so um, just want to encourage everyone, as people have been doing already, just drop questions in Q&A, also drop questions into the chat. So uh, let's get into the meat of it here. So, um, you know, if you think about the essence of what you're doing when you're trading, whether it's crypto or um, Forex or it's um, commodities or stocks, is what you're essentially doing is you're forecasting. You're forecasting what's going to happen, and um, and so the forecast is really much, really, pretty much is everything, right? So if you have a really accurate forecast, you can do pretty well. If you have a really bad forecast, it's going to be really hard to make money. So you know when you buy or sell security, it really depends on on like the accuracy of that forecast. Now, for the past fifty plus years, there's been a lot of indicators, things that are trying to be predictive as to the future of where the stock price is going to be. Things like RSI or relative strength index. And there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of others like Bollinger Bands, you know, uh, rolling averages. There's a ton of other, other kind of um, in, what we call technical indicators that people have developed. And so in the, in the case with RSI, um, you see kind of the, um, that uh, the RSI kind of broke here at uh, 66.66. 66. Um, and so, you know, that kind of tells you that this is going to do kind of a, a run 
right? Which it does here. And then as you see it kind of taps the line down here at 33, that's gonna kind of level out, which it kind of does. Now, um, you know, this is not a terribly accurate way of forecasting the stock. It's one way. Um, and maybe 50 years ago, you could probably make more money doing this. Um, these indicators are really used to forecast the future price of securities. And so, and there's a bunch of them in each, each um, uh, security has kind of like their own set of, um, of indicators. And, um, and, and so um, this is kind of like how a lot of people do it. Like they call this technical analysis, right? Um, so a lot of people do this, but it's harder and harder to make money these days. And I'll get into why, why that is. So the problem with traditional indicators is first of all, um, this is a really great blog website. So if you guys haven't heard of it, you guys should definitely look it up. It's called Seeking Alpha, but there's also a really great investment device on it. So, so check it out. And um, uh, on Seeking Alpha, they have this great article that talks about how algo trading dominates 8% of the stock market, right? So most of the trading, most of the trading volume you see on the stock market isn't some individual trader, right, on Robinhood. Uh, you would think it is, but it isn't. Most of it actually is institutional trading using algorithmic trading. And these algorithmic traders, <clears throat> these large institutions, <clears throat> pretty much <clears throat> have sucked most of the profits away from technical analysis. And that's why it's really, really hard these days to make money as a, as a day trader doing technical analysis. You know, a few decades ago, you could probably do it. But these days, you know, pretty much every straightforward technical analysis has been has been um, um, profited away, right? Um, okay, let's see. Uh, I got a good question here. Um, as a trader between technical analysis and fundamental, fundamental analysis, which would do better for stock predictions? Okay, I would say that it really depends on the horizon. So um, if you're you know, doing like a decade long horizon, like Warren Buffett does, then you know, definitely more of the fundamental analysis is what matters. But if you're doing more kind of like short-term trading, then technical, technical analysis makes more sense. But you know, like I said, the reality is that technical analysis, um, just using purely technical analysis and you know, a spreadsheet is really hard these days to make money. You can do it, but it's not so easy. The, the, the second challenge about, um, about uh, technical analysis or using traditional trading indicators is that these models are, are really, really simple, right? They have maybe you know, one or two parameters. And the problem is, is that they really don't capture the complexity of forecasting patterns. So maybe if you were the only one doing it, you know, you get some sort of edge, but pretty much, you know, this is, this is like investor 101, right? Everyone knows most of these technical analysis and certainly all the big institutions, you know, and, um, and uh, uh, so it's hard, hard for you to make money and not, to, not only do institutions use it, but they also do it a lot faster than you could do it. So the really straightforward ones that uh, are obvious, people, people pretty much automatically do. So, so you cannot re react fast enough to, in, in most cases to actually get a profitable trade. So for individuals, it's, it's, it's really hard to get this kind of edge. Um, you know, it's basically get something that other traders don't really know. Because the way to think about a stock market is it's kind of like a, a zero-sum game. You make money because someone else loses money. So it's kind of hard to, um, it's hard to beat the big institutions on this kind of technical analysis approach just because they, you know, they, they have big computers that do it all the time and they could pretty much out-execute you before you could even, you know, place your trade. But good, uh, good question, um, uh, Haifuzo. I'm not sure you pronounced that name, <laughs> but sorry, sorry I butchered it. Um, okay, so what's the difference between traditional indicators versus machine learning? Well, the nice thing about traditional indicators, and, and this is why they developed like 50 years ago, is that you really don't need a powerful computer to calculate them. A lot of them are simple ratios or just sum, summing up a few numbers or taking an average. So they're very easy to calculate and understand. So that's a really great thing about traditional indicators is that there's nothing to it. The really big problem with traditional indicators is that they have very limited ability to factor in different information. Um, like I said, a lot of these traditional indicators have just a few parameters. That means they can only hold, they have a very limited capacity to hold you know, complex patterns. 
But the, frankly, the biggest issue with traditional indicators is that it's way too popular. Everyone knows, you know, the 50 to 100 traditional indicators. Everyone has bots way, you know, triggered off of these indicators. And so it's really hard to outdo um, these institutionals who have all these bots in play. Now, on the other hand, machine learning, um, it's computation complex and much harder to implement. It's also harder to understand what's going on. It's more black box. Um, and you know, as a result, actually, a lot of institutionals do not use machine learning because of the fact that it's block, black box and it's not explainable. But the real big advantage of machine learning is that you have just about an unlimited ability to factor in different information. So that's actually really, really cool because um, you could take in like, you know, what's happening, what people are talking about on Wall Street bets. You, you could factor in, you know, what's happening on CNN. Um, you could factor in what's going on on Twitter, right? So you can factor in a whole bunch of different type of information, much more than, because if you look at a lot of these traditional indicators, they're just taking the historical price and, you know, take, doing some sort of simple average on it. And so it's really hard to extract um, predictive information. Uh, let's see, we have, <coughs> we have another question here. Um, for ML and finance, do you guys use supervised learning like regression or unsupervised learning like classifications? You can finish your commission for answering. Okay, well, thank you. So I actually like to take questions as you go because people forget what the question was. So um, in finance, um, most of it is actually supervised learning like regression. There is some classification as well that you do to let's say, for instance, classify um, Twitter tweets, right? Or classify uh, Wall Street bets, right? So you may use classification for that. But most of what happens in uh, finance actually is supervised learning. Although for my company uh, at Pico Group, um, one strategy has been becoming pretty popular. So, so there's just two pieces to algorithmic trading. One way, one thing is the forecast, like what, what, you know, what is the price going to be? And the second thing is how do you trade on it, right? What is the trigger? So like we call it indicators and triggers. That's how, that's how you can think about algorithmic trading. Now for the, for the forecast, the indicator part, it's very much, um, very much, uh, using traditional supervised learning with classification, maybe not with classification, but with regression, maybe with some classification on like NLP type stuff. But then on the trigger side, you could do simple triggers, um, like basically using like if statements, but uh, we've, we've actually had a lot of success using um, another technology called reinforcement learning, uh, which, which, you know, in general reinforcement learning does really well in games. And you can think about the stock market as being, you know, one of the largest games out there, right? Um, lots of players. Uh, let's see, uh, Dahlia asked a question, would I be able to view this later? And the answer is yes. It's actually, I think, Robert, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is live stream to you, uh, YouTube right now, right? Yes, that's correct. Yep, yep, okay. Yeah, so if you miss something, just feel free to kind of go back and rewatch it. So I actually sent the link earlier, but I'll send the link one more time. So here's uh, the link to uh, our, this is the specific video actually streaming right now on YouTube. And as soon as it's done streaming, yeah, no problem. As soon as it's done streaming, you'll be able to actually watch uh, it again right afterwards, right? Uh, make sure you also subscribe to our YouTube channel because we send a ton of stuff throughout there. So. Yeah, that way you get automatic alerts, which is kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, the other thing that's really neat about machine learning is it's very cutting edge. So like I said, even some large institutions have not really adopted machine learning yet. So you could get, it's, it's a way to get an edge, you could get, to get a differentiation on your trading. So for those reasons, those are the reasons why machine learning is kind of um, um, kind of very exciting right now for um, algorithmic trading. Now, you guys heard me. You guys heard me talk about this term machine learning. So what the heck is it? You know, everyone's heard of artificial intelligence, right? Um, or in, in science fiction, a lot of times you see this kind of like generalized AI, right, which we're pretty far away from right now. We're still trying to figure out how to do autonomous driving, right? So we're, we're, not, far, we're not that close to actually having um, general AI yet. Um, but machine learning is a part of AI. And um, the part of machine learning that we're gonna be talking about a lot is this idea called supervised machine learning. And that's what um, I'm, gonna, I'm kind of contrasting here in terms of what, what is machine learning. So uh, with conventional, programming, what's going on is you have the data, some sort of data, let's say historical stock prices, you have a program, let's say it's, um, let's say it's a, 
uh, R, RSI, right? It's just calculating RSI and then it spits out a result, right? Uh, that's conventional programming, right? Very, very straightforward. Um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's fairly easy to understand, although the programs can get big and can be complex, but it's pr pretty straightforward. Now, um, what's, what's machine learning in terms of like supervised machine learning? Um, it's it's, it's kind of like you're flipping the results in the, in the program, right? So, um, so, so basically what's going on here is, is we're, we're taking the, uh, I'm gonna try drawing here. Let's see, can I draw? Oh, here it is. Okay, so basically we're, we're taking the results and we're moving up to, we're swapping these, these two things essentially, right? Um, so rather than putting in a Python program, what we're doing is we're saying, here are the answers, right? Here's the, the, the training, or sometimes we call this the features, right? This is the features. And um, what the model does is it learns. It learns what we call the weights or the parameters. And, and then it spits out essentially what is a program, right? So that's, that's what machine learning is. It's a swapping, swapping the program and the results, uh, which, which is kind of cool, right? Um, and actually what's really interesting is the way humans learn is actually more like how machine learning learns, right? This is how more, how we learn as a human. Um, you know, the, the stuff here on the right hand side is more analogous to like you going in for brain surgery, right? And, and then the neurosurgeon, you're like rewiring your head. You don't learn too much that way typically. You learn more like sitting in class, someone's lecturing, they give you tests and problem sets to do. And then you figure out how to wire up yourself. Your, your, so your, your, your brain kind of makes the own program. So the way machine learning happens is very much the way um, humans learn actually, or not, or any animal learns. So it's learn, it learns mainly by example. And the uh, power of this is that it could, it could, um, you know, like if you're trying to program how to recognize a cat using, you know, traditional programming techniques, it's actually really hard, right? You have to kind of look at things at the pixel level. You're trying to figure out like, okay, you know, does it have, you know, pointed ears? Does it have like whiskers, whatever, right? Um, but it's, it's actually pretty hard to program it versus machine learning. It could, it could, it could learn it and spit out a program that could do it. And, and this is, um, this basically machine learning opens up uh, a whole new way of programming that cannot be done before. So one question here is, so we use a sample of data to teach and test the model. Then we, then, and then what, then once we make sure the model is accurate enough, we feed them, we feed the model, the data correct. Yeah, so that's basically right. So you, so the first step of machine learning is you, you do training, right? So first one is training. And then after you do training, you do what's called inference. So that's after the models are, are kind of like pre-trained. So that's exactly right. And, um, and uh, um, they're kind of like the, the cool thing here is um, really kind of like the person that right now there's, there's a lot of demand for programmers, but the cool thing here is even if you're not the world's best programmer, you still get into machine learning because the skill set is actually quite different. With, with machine learning, it's much more like engineering driven. Um, it's much more deterministic in terms of how you're going to do things. But with machine learning, it's much more like you're a teacher, right? If you're like, like for instance, for me, I'm teaching this class, right? And what I do is I also pass out um, homework assignments, right? So that um, to kind of reinforce what's learned in the lecture, right? And so, um, and so that's, um, so basically probably the most valuable person in the world later on is going to be, you know, the right now programmers are really hot stuff, but increasingly it's going to be people that know how to teach machines. So this machine learning teacher, right? Or mach machine learning engineers can be like the job of the future because um, there's so many applications that are not possible without a machine learning approach, right? Just like it's pretty hard for a brain surgeon to wire in your brain how to add two plus two. I mean, certainly maybe one day it's possible, but we're pretty, we're pretty far from that, right? But it's actually pretty straightforward to do that um, using machine learning. So um, yeah, so that's, that's what machine learning is. Um, let me erase my scribble here and move on. Okay. Okay, so um, let me talk a little about um, some of the performance that you could see from this. Um, 
So first, uh, let me kind of talk a little bit about uh, my company, uh, Pico Group. Um, so what our company does is we mainly work with day traders. And these are typically people who are professional day traders, people who um, already have a working strategy. And um, the reason why they, they come to us, the reason why a lot of day traders are moving to augmented trading is because, like I said, a lot of the big profit is kind of whittled away by the algorithm traders, right? All the institutionals. So, um, the, you know, the only money to be made are made now are like small money, small number of dollars per transaction, right? So, it's almost analogous to like in the old days. Let's say forty years ago, you would find you know hundred dollar bills in the street, right? So fairly easy to make money. Um, but these days, because it was all the algorithm trading, um, a lot of the traditional tr technical analysis is not so easy to to make a lot of money. So what, what, what's analogous now is that there's a lot of pennies on the ground, right? Not hundred dollar bills, a lot of pennies on the ground. So if you have to pick up those pennies manually, it may not be worth it. But if you have like a vacuum cleaner that could automatically pick up all these pennies, suddenly it becomes very interesting. So, um, so that's what's driving a lot of kind of algorithmic traders, to, I mean, a lot of day traders towards algorithmic trading. Um, and then what we do is we host it in the cloud, uh, which I highly advise just because if there's a power outage or you have a bad internet or something like that, you could really lose a lot of money. So we host it on the cloud for them. We write the algorithm. It's kind of like a consulting arrangement. And then we have an interface where I'll show you um, this shortly. We have an interface that, um, that uh, allows you to kind of track you know, what's going on to manage the different algorithms. Um, so it's just all it's kind of point and click interface. And then we also have safeguards. So it's really important also with algorithm trading is sometimes there's bugs. In fact, it's not sometimes, almost always there's some sort of bug in the code and you don't want it to lose all your money. So having safeguards are actually really important, some sort of fail safe. And then we also have a back test system where you can back test, um, you can back test your, your algorithm and, um, and see how, how well it performed. And then, uh, and just let everyone know what back test means. It means uh, <coughs> pretending that the algorithm ran in the past to see what happened. Right, but then that way you could judge the performance. So that's that's kind of a um, a important piece. So you'll start with back testing, then you do paper trading, that means trading without real money, and then you do real trading. That's that's a process you you must go through. And then um, the other thing is we have a big suite of um, machine learning libraries that we use to build um, the customized algorithms out of. So that's what our company does, Speaker Group. Let me talk a little bit about some of the performance. But before I do that, just want to let everyone know that. Um, you know, myself and, you know, Pico Group and, and Newman Wealth, we are not registered uh, advisors. We are, this is basically, you can think of us as like a tool provider. We're providing tools, like in the case with Newman Wealth, providing you with education, and in my case, providing you some building blocks. And um, so what we're talking about here, this, this is not a promise of what you'll get or forward-looking statements. This is just what has happened historically. So anyway, so I just want to put that disclosure out there. Now, um, for... Um, what kind of performance do people get? Now, I don't know if you guys have heard much about something called a sharp ratio. Sharp, sharp ratio is like the risk, risk adjusted returns. Typically anything over one is really good. So an average sharp ratio of 3.3 is like amazing. And, um, you know, competent annual growth rate or CAGR. Um, so this is, um, um, you know, if you look at the market, the market is maybe 10%, maybe, you know, maybe nine, 10%, something on that order. So getting 42% is actually phenomenal, right? That's like, that's enviable. I mean, that's like venture capital like return. So it's actually quite, quite, um, quite exciting, right? Um, and so this is what's driving people to get into using machine learning for investing. Okay, so in the course, let me talk about the tools we're using. Um, we're gonna be using Alpaca. Um, they have probably one of the most robust APIs out there. It's also, um, they also offer free trading, although there's still a bit ask spread. Um, they also provide a lot of quotes, although not as free as, as they used to be. Uh, we're using Pan, uh, Python 3, which is you know, one of the easiest languages to learn. In fact, it's the most popular, but it's definitely one of the easiest languages to learn. And um, there's something called Pandas. We're not talking about the animal. We're talking about like, um, it's, basically, um, it's basically like, they have something called data frames. So it's like, basically you think about almost like Excel, a, a programmatic version of Excel, right? So that's what Pandas are. And then, um, we've been using like TA or technical analysis, which is a Python library. We're going to be using scikit-learn. Um, scikit-learn is uh, one of the most popular machine learning, learning libraries out there. And we're also going to be using uh, Google Colab. So 
uh, Google Collab makes programming a cinch. It's basically, it's kind of like the Google Docs, but for programming. So you could do a lot of kind of team-based work and um, it's running in the cloud. So it's not I mean, running on a machine. So it's kind of a great deal. It's, it's totally free. They, all, they also have a pro version. Um, so we can do a lot of it in Google Collab. And then, um, uh, you know, in the old days, you would have to do a lot of like um, a lot of uh, manual work, a lot of detailed work to get things working. But these days, the great news is that all these cloud providers, whether it's AWS or Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure, has a lot of, this, a lot of these available as services. So what once took like you know a PhD and in, uh, in uh, NLP, now you know just a high school kid hooking up to the APIs could do a lot. So that's why we use these platforms. And in particular, we'll be using one called Google Natural Language Processing or NLP. Okay, so let me um, talk a little bit about the code. Um, and um, so um, uh, so we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the setup. Um, uh, and then, um, and then uh, we're gonna use Alpaca to get the data. There's a website out there called ThinVis which is also kind of neat. It has a lot of news information um, and charting uh, for different stocks. And we're gonna use something called Beautiful Soup to um, help scrape that. Um, and then we'll um, generate the training data. And training data really is the fuel for machine learning, right? In, in, in other areas, it's the code, right? It's the Python code. But in our case with machine learning, it's really the training data. So getting that kind of cleaned up and ready. And then the test data to make sure it actually works. So the way you think, of, the way you think of yourself as a machine learning engineer is, you think you're like the teacher in a class. You're trying to teach a class, and you're trying to make sure the models actually learn what's going on. Then we'll do the training of the model. We'll generate the prediction. Then we'll do the analysis of the results. One thing I, I just realized that I should do is I'm gonna I'm gonna show you, um, uh, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna do like a little bit of a cooking show thing. I'm gonna get the thing started because I, I just ran this before. Um, before the, um, uh, um, webinar, and it takes a little bit to run. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, quickly just jump to the Pika Group website. You're actually, first I'll show you what the Pika Group website looks like. Uh, so this is this is uh, Pika Group. Um, so you could kind of see what we do. Basically, we're automating day trading and some of the services that we provide. Um, and uh, but let me show you our um, our uh, system here. Um, and uh, let me see here. Okay, here it is. Okay, so, um, so um, you know what, what you'll do is you'll put your your um, your uh, uh, your uh, your keys in here, like using you know like Alpaca, which is a very popular uh, zero commission. Um, algorithmic trading, or you can also use interactive brokers. Um, and then um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to submit a job here. So um, let me just go to the next one. So we're going to use um, Alpaca. Um, five is, is, is fine. We're going to do um, back testing, do a stock. We're not going to do any bid ask spreads right now. Um, and then we're not gonna do any retraining. Uh, let's just set this for uh, three, um, three, 10, uh, 2021. And then we just set it for the morning when the old market opens. And then we'll go to 3, 15, 2021 uh, for when the market closes. Starting cash is 10, we'll start with 10,000 paper cash. Okay, and then let's select the strategy. So we're just gonna do a simple trigger and I'll get into more of this later. I, I wanna start this now just because um, it takes a little bit to run. And then if the forecast is like, let's say um, 0.3 more than the actual, then we know that's probably a good buy. And if, likewise, if it's 0.3 lower, then we probably wanna sell or short. So stock-wise, we're just gonna do, um, uh, Agilent, A, and number of shares that we're trade is, um, we'll, check, we'll do 10, 
and then um, we're not going to send them back to the position. We'll sell here to the next one. And then um, we're going to use um, a random force war or rolling. And I'll, I'm going to get into code right now after, after this. Um, we do minutes and we're going to do 15 minutes in the future. Um, and we're going to do it every 15 minutes. So let's uh, kick this off. Okay, so it's, it's kicked off here. Um, we could go here and check out the, um, the jobs running. Okay. Yep. So we have we have our um, the back test that we just kicked off. So we'll let that run. Okay. So I'm gonna put this aside. Let it let it uh, turn for a little bit. And then let me let me go into uh, the code here now. So while that's running, I'll give us time to talk about this. Okay. So um, for those of you that are not familiar with, um, oh, actually, here's another question. Just want to make sure. Uh, you guys teach how to start trading or programming or both. And actually the answer is we do both. So, um, so um, if you're totally new, um, Robert teaches a class which uh, teaches you how to get started with algorithmic trading. Even, even if you know like no programming, it could kind of bring you up. And again, Python is probably one of the most, is one of the easiest languages to learn how to program. And um, uh, in terms of teach you how to trade, um, uh, you know, again, we're not investment advisors, but we'll give you the tools of how to do that. But a uh, really good question. Okay, so let's move on. So, um, so this is a collab. Again, it's just collab.research.google.com. Amazing service is free, although you know, not as amazing as it used to be where they used to offer a lot of GPU support, but they, they've kind of uh, moved back on that a bit. Um, so you can see here, we're basically installing some of the dependencies um, these are the libraries that we're including into our, our system, you know, along with authentication. And then here, um, what we do is we use something in Google called it's a secret manager. So generally, I don't like to have any plain text keys in my code, just because a lot of people usually work on the code and, you know, plain text passwords um, in code is a great way to get hacked, especially with financials, you'd want that. So I use something called secret manager, uh, which is very easy to get set up. And so we don't actually um, keep any of our keys in this code here. Um, and then, um, so basically call stick manager gets a key. And then what we do here is we just de decode it. And then we use that to set up the API for, um, for uh, um, Alpaca. Okay. Now, um, oops, where's my mouse? Okay, here it is. Um, so now um, we authenticate with Google, um, and then um, we're, we're going to be using uh, Google NLP. So these are Google uh, NLP, Natural Language Processing. And then um, these are just some, some helper um, libraries as well. We, we kind of set all of our, our, um, our, uh, our service up here, and then Let's see. Um, uh, yeah, so we get the we get the credential set up, and then um, uh, what we're doing here is we're doing some of the NLP. So uh, we set up the the Google API to basically give it plain text. So we're, as in our case, we're going to be using um, Agilent to um, to trade on, and then. Um, so this, this basically sends it into the NLP and then NLP will develop a sentiment score. Like, like is it positive, negative, et cetera. Here we're using um, you know, Panda Data Frames and Beautiful Soup to um, basically uh, scrape the website. So we call it Beautiful Soup, we scrape the website. And then we essentially uh, pump, pump the news that we get from the FinViz website that that beautiful soup is, is scraping to essentially uh, figure out the sentiment of each and every uh, post um, on on um, this ticker, right? So that's what that's what this this uh, first function is doing. Okay, and then um, so after we do that, 
then um uh so this is this is basically kind of iterating through the through the news um this is the function um sorry this up here is, is the function that that this that this uh, uses and then um yeah and then once we have that all um all that sentiment going through then we have a score so what we'll do then is so you, you can see like this was uh you know john Doyle's today dips nasdaq affiliates whatever just you know that's kind of neutral it doesn't talk about it doesn't talk about uh actually in general and then there's another one here Agent technologies q2 earnings so the q2 earnings were slightly positive but there's also some of those negative news that happens Okay, so um, so basically we put in the scores and then we use the score as a feature into the model. So we're using NLP to decode the message of sentiment. Then we feed the sentiment score into the uh, machine learning model. Okay, so here we have a couple of helper functions um so um this this is just sorting the scores and then this one here is a robust way of gathering um the uh, this is a robust way of gathering um uh tick stock ticker data from alpaca because stock alpaca only gives you so much and if you don't uh if you don't um retry you only get a, a small amount of data because they want they want to rate them too essentially Okay, now here we're setting up the um, NLP indicators. So, you know, we're using Ajlan, same stock as before. Uh, we're setting up for a one, in, one minute increment. Um, and then what we'll do here is we'll, um, we'll uh, basically call API bar, get bar set, which is the API that Apocalypse uses to, to get data. And then um, what you see down here is all of the all of the different indicators that we um, that we uh, are calculating, and these are these will become features into our model to see if a model could generate could do a better job. And one of the features, of course, is the um, NLP um, NLP um, function call that we're, that we're calling to Google. Um, let's keep going on here. Okay, so we, we do now the same thing for the test data. So we did it for the training data, now we do the same thing for the test data. So same basic idea. So here you see, you know, here's the timestamps. Um, here's the, the um, close price, this is the time of day. So, so this is what we're trying to target. Um, and then these rest of these columns become features that we use to help the model predict what's gonna happen. Now, one thing we're doing here is we're using this idea called rolling training data. So rather than um, rather than you know forecasting from tomorrow all the way out 365 years, what we do is we like basically here. Let me draw it for you guys so you guys get an idea. So, um, oops, let me try to annotate again. So what we do is, um, is uh, let's say this is a test set, and then this is a train set. Okay. So what we do is rather than having kind of like this window where it's expanding out more and more, right? Okay. What we're doing is we're simply 
taking the test data and we're just rolling it, rolling it forward like this, right? Do you, do you guys see that? So we, we kind of roll it forward. And so the forecast distance for us would be less. No, we're no, we're no, 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 we're never, no, at no time are we forecasting more than like 15 minutes in the future, essentially. So that's what this code's doing here. Okay. Okay, so on, on here, um, that's what's going on here, right? So essentially um, we're fitting the data, right? And then we are, um, we are um, forecasting in the future, right? Essentially 15 minutes. And that's what you can see here, right? Okay, so now, um, so this is all the data transformed. And now let's see how well our, uh oh, am I not showing my window anymore? Somebody said I'm not showing my window. Robert, can you see my screen? You can see my screen? I cannot see your screen, no. Oh, shoot, sorry about that, guys. Thank you guys for, <laughs> Okay, I got, can you guys see my screen now? Yep, I can see it now. Okay, sorry, I think I, when I top, turned off annotation, I, I accidentally stopped the screen share. So yeah, thank you guys for uh, saying something. I would hate to go all this time in there and uh, you guys couldn't see my slides. Okay, so, um, okay. So yeah, so how does this look? So here you could see um, the flat lines or, or the street or the street lines are basically when the um, the market is closed. So, but when the market is open, you can see a squiggle around, and you can see in general, our model does a, a pretty decent job in forecasting what's going on with each um, stock trade, right? So, fairly accurate. Then down here, you can see something called um, feature importance. So, it tells you what feature is really important in terms of forecasting. And so, you can see down here. RSI is actually pretty good, right? And so that's why a lot of people use RSI, lots of strength index. So the other thing is to look at error metrics. So here we can see, you know, of course we're only forecasting 15 minutes in the future, so it's hard to be that wrong. But, um, but you could see that our, our MSC is about 0.24, so not bad. And the percent error is only about 0.56, so pretty good. Point, 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 sorry, 0.25 um, percent error, so pretty good. Now, doing the same thing, but without the NLP, let's see how it looks. So similar looking graph, right? And then let's check to see if if this is um, if this is uh, if this is significant, right? So we do the same same kind of math, but this time using um, using um, uh, 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 something called f value to measure how um, statist statistically significant it is. And you can see down here at twenty is really statistically significant. Twenty twenty is actually quite a bit for f value. Um, so basically having, having the, this is not surprising, but having the news data in, incorporated into your model basically makes it more accurate. And that's not, probably, I'm not probably saying anything that you guys don't know already, but, but that's, that's kind of like what's going on here. Okay, good. Um, so let me see here. Let's see if this thing's finished uh, running. Okay, it looks like it's done. Okay, so let me move this back. So that, that's, that's the demo here. Oh, one thing I forgot to um, talk about is how do we do with the trigger? So what we're doing here to do the trigger is if the forecasted amount, right? So if the, let me draw this. So if, if the forecasted amount, right, is greater than the current price, then, um, so the forecast amount times some sort of threshold. And I think in our case, we use 0.3, then, because you want it too small because it stocks just around and then you'd be trading all the time without really making money. 
So, so if the close price is less than the prediction price, then it must know that um, it should buy, right? It should buy stock. But if the stock, if the close price is forecast to be, um, uh, uh, if, the, if the close price is forecasted to be higher than the, right, if the predictive, predictive price is lower, forecast to be lower than the close price, then you probably want to sell, right? And that's what that's what it does down here. And if you're, if you know, if you're not sure, if it's within this plus or minus 0.3, then um, then don't do anything, right? So that's that's what this code is doing. So let me see if the results are done. Here they are. No, oh, let me stop. Uh, okay. Okay, great. So, um, so we started with ten thousand dollars, and we basically made um, like I don't know thirty thirty five dollars roughly, right? So not bad. Um, gives us a sharp ratio of 0 0.05, which is really good. Anything over one is really good. Uh, company annual growth rate is about almost thirty percent, so that's also really damn good. Um, now we don't win every trade, but we win enough that we make more money. Um, okay, and then you can see kind of like the profit factor. These are more minor type of um, technical indicators. So I'm not going to go over that too much detail. Um, but yeah, so you could see, um, oh, let me move this um, over. Um, so here you can see, you know, what is the kind of like buy sell total for each? And then uh, how much margin is required in the volume of the trade, right? So you can see that. And then you also watch the stock price. So um, yeah, so this is why people use machine learning. It's because you can make money doing it. Okay, so in the demo, um, we kind of showed you how to, um, uh, you know, what machine learning is, what deep learning is, we showed you how to build a, a forecasting stock market stock stock, stock market model, um, and in our forecast demo, we we showed that um, how to use indicators of features, how the random forest model works, and then forecasting for fifty minutes in the future, right? So that's what the demo I just showed you in the call out. Okay, um, the course. So let me let me uh, share my screen so you guys can see this. Hey Greg, I can actually uh, I can actually show off this part. Okay, sure. It'll be a little bit easier. Okay, sure. Let me stop my. Should want you I'll let you share, or should you? Yeah, want to I, can, I can share. Okay, uh, should I stop sharing? I'll let you share. Uh, it's okay. I can. I think I could just take over from. Okay, sure. There you go. Perfect. Greg, so thank you very much for that demo. I always love seeing that. Um, definitely very cool stuff um, and really uh, huge potential for making some, some very good gains. Um, I know some of our models that we work on, we, you know, 20% is, is very good. Um, you know, getting like the, the 40 plus that's, that's like outstanding, you know, being able to, to have those types of models. I mean, it's, you know, you make, you make that kind of return a year after year for, you know, 10, 20 years, it could be really, 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 really rich. So uh, I definitely think that's very, very cool. So, uh, so guys, let me show off the, the actual course that Greg teaches, right? So um, today was kind of like a little sample, right? A little demo of like, kind of like what you can come out of this with, right? And a little bit of uh, getting to know Greg, right? Uh, but let me tell you about the actual course that he teaches and how you guys can actually participate in this course, right? So if you guys want to follow along, I'm going to put in the uh, link here, right? Into our chat, right? So there's a link if you guys want to follow along. Uh, you could also just get to it by going to lumiwealth.com. And let me show you how Lumi, lumiwealth.com. And we scroll down a little bit. I uh, see a few of our classes down here. 
Uh, we have our algorithm trading class, we have our machine learning class, we have our development consulting services. We're also going to be adding in an options trading course very soon as well. So you'll see that here probably in the next two or three weeks. All right. But we're talking about the machine learning course. So let me tell you more about this course here. So essentially, um, this course, you're going to come out of it um, with Greg uh, working through uh, these types of projects, right? Um, there are three different plans really that we have for these courses, right? There's a self-directed plan, which is basically uh, the recordings of, of the classes, right? So you'll get uh, last um, cohorts or last semester, if you want to call it that, um, the last recordings from the last group before you guys, right? Um, that's what the self-directed class is, right? Um, you'll also get a chance to, to join our Discord and kind of be part of the community and ask questions, that sort of thing, right? Um, our most popular, by far, our most pa popular package is this live classes plan where uh, you're basically going to be in uh, something like this with, with Greg, um, like a live over Zoom. Um, this, this stuff is awesome, right? Because you can ask questions throughout. But imagine, so this, this webinar is good. You could ask questions. But imagine you guys could have your mics on, your, your cameras on, and you could just like turn on your mic and just ask a question. You guys could have a dialogue the whole way through. So if you're confused about something, you're trying to go through this, um, you could ask those questions. I know Greg is really, really big on, on workshops as well. Uh, and Greg, kudos to you for this because we've been bringing this throughout the rest of our classes. Um, really, Greg is good at this sort of thing of like, are you uh, are you there where you need to be? Especially when we have smaller class sizes, this makes it great. So that you're not only are you learning from Greg, but you also get a chance to um, kind of show off your work and get feedback on it, and he'll help you actually build this whole thing together. So it's just it's really really valuable. Um, believe me, Greg's time is very valuable. Um, and, and having him help you out with these types of projects is, you know, th think about the types of returns that he gets, think, think about the types of uh, the type of company that he runs and having him help you with these projects is just incredibly valuable during the class. Um, so that's the live class. Um, you also obviously get to know uh, other students as well. So you guys get to collaborate. Um, it's a very, very social um, and very interactive type of experience, right? With these live classes, right? Uh, we also have a project help and tutoring plan, uh, and this is will include everything that I said before, right? Uh, by the way, it's live classes. If you ever want to retake them, we have a few people retaking them. Um, more than welcome to you can retake them as many times as you want, right? Um, it's until you actually really get the material down if you need to, or life circumstances come up, that sort of thing. You retake them if you'd like. Um, the project help and tutoring plan, this is our premium plan. Um, this will get not only... Um, more of, of my time and of Greg's time, we'll like spend more time speaking to you. Uh, but then also we can get our developers involved as well and help build out some of these algorithms with you, right? So this is our project help and tutoring plan. Um, so here are uh, kind of our bundles, right? Um, the, uh, so this is our uh, self-directed plan, uh, it's 650, right, flat. Um, our machine learning, uh, uh, live classes, the ones that are really the most popular, are about $3,000. Um, they come out to about $1,000 a month on the payment plan. You pay in, in three month intervals. Um, we don't have the um, project help and tutoring plan up here, which we normally would have. That's something closer to, to, to $4,200 for that one. Uh, and then we have a bunch of bundles here, right? So uh, pe people definitely like doing this sort of thing. So especially you guys that are a little bit newer to the coding uh, kind of world and haven't really uh, program too much and, and that sort of thing. Uh, this is probably the best bet for you guys is to build to get like a bundle, right? Um, you can get uh, both self-directed together or you can get self-directed of one uh, and then live class of the other or you get live classes of both of them together. Um, these are kind of the, the different types of bundles they can get. Um, these are a few different options here. I think if you guys get on the phone with some of our, for some, with some of our um, customer service guys, um, they'll walk you through the options a little bit more clearly in this, but uh, here's a couple of them that are laid out um, of the different options they can get. Really comes down to either self-directed um, up here, the self-directed plan, the live classes plan, which is the one that um, you're, you're live over Zoom and you get to ask questions, that sort of thing, or the project help and tutoring, which is the one that you get all of the above, plus you get you know our dev team involved and that sort of thing, all right? Um, so I'm going to walk you through here. There's, if you guys walk down page, you can read a little bit about what machine learning is and the outcomes of the course. There's a lot of good stuff in there, but I'm, uh, I think Greg covered a lot of that. So I'm not going to go too deep into it. Um, 
you know, why is machine learning good for trading? I think that's also a very valuable thing. Um, and then we have our course curriculum. So um, before, before I pass it back to Greg um, to kind of go over, because he knows the curriculum the best, he's the one that's teaching this. Uh, I'm going to talk about kind of the next live classes are coming up and the dates, right? So next class is actually starting very soon. Uh, registration closes in three days on June 4th, right? Um, the course starts on June 10th. I believe that's a Thursday, right? Um, it goes for eight weeks long, uh, excluding any kind of holidays. If it falls on holiday, then, then we skip a week, right? Um, and then also uh, it's about, we recommend about eight to 12 hours a week of, of self-paced learning. So yeah, you're going to be in about two hours a day of lecture or two hours per, per week um, of lecture. But then you're also expected to spend uh, some extra time uh, going through this as well, practicing, going over the assignments. Um, and the class itself is every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern or 5 p.m. Pacific, right? Uh, lecture duration, we say an hour per week, uh, really is a little bit longer. It's probably closer to an hour and a half to two hours, right? Um, and, and that's about the lecture time per, per week, right? So that's our classes starting in June. Those are coming up very soon. If you guys are interested in those, uh, make sure to sign up by the end of this week because um, these things are, are, are starting very, very soon. All right, then we also have uh, another class starting in August in case that time doesn't work for you. This is also gonna be the same sort of thing. Um, registration closes August 12th, course starts on August 26th. Um, it's eight weeks long, same thing, eight to 12 hours per week we recommend. Uh, it's every Thursday again, 8 p.m. Eastern or 5 p.m. Pacific, right? And then uh, lecture duration, we say an hour, but really kind of goes on for closer, like an hour and a half to two hours. So you really get a lot of time with Greg throughout these throughout this class. All right, so uh, those are kind of the dates coming up. I'm gonna pass it back to Greg so he could talk about the, the course curriculum and the, and the projects that we go over, right? So Greg, do you wanna go ahead and, and talk about that? Uh, do you wanna share your screen or do you want... Um... Oops, sorry, I'm not mean. I was muted, sorry. I, I could share my screen. Okay, great. So I'm going to stop sharing now. Okay. Um, so let me uh, let me share my screen here. Um, okay, that, that didn't work. Let me give it a shot again. Share. Okay. I think you guys can see my screen now. Okay. Um, okay. So let me go over the um, the course curriculum. So we have this program up into three parts. Uh, the first part is um, student introductions. Kind of one of the most valuable things, as as Robert talked about, is students meeting other students. Um, I've seen some people kind of pair up on projects and work together. So it's it's actually a really great way to connect with this kind of the community that happens. Um, so we, we start off with kind of introductions so everyone kind of knows each other. We talk about you know some of some of the um, some of the resources that we'd be using, um, and then um, you know the layout and tools, the system setup, et cetera. And um, what I found to be really popular are like in class labs. So I'm probably gonna do a little bit more of that. So there's um, we can ensure that everyone walks out of each um, each class with kind of enough um, knowledge to be successful. Um, the second week, we're going to be focused on machine learning basics. So what, why and what is machine learning? Um, what is regression, linear regression, which is the most basic of machine learning models? Um, what is random forest? When used each? What is the training process like? So just, just enough to, for you to kind of get, it, get your hands around uh, what is machine learning. And then we get into deep learning. So deep learning is, um, is a form of machine learning. Um, most of what people do these days is, is shallow learning, but more and more people are doing deep learning. Um, you understand what, when, what, uh, and why to use machine learning. And then we'll get into how do you train and validate deep learning models? Because it is a bit more involved than using, um, using uh, shallow learning. Week four, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to, uh, get into how to optimize a model. Um, the great thing here is a lot of the really green, a lot of the little gritty, um, gritty kind of machine learning type of stuff has now been automated. So you can use things like Google AutoML, AutoML tables as an example, or use pre-built models like the Google AI platform. And we talk about how do you track all your different experiments. So this is week one. 
it's kind of like fundamentals. And then week two, um, we get into time series forecasting. So time series forecasting is just like non-time series and time series forecasting. Most people do non-time series forecasting, but for stocks, obviously, time series forecasting is actually really important. So we talk about what's the difference between them, theory, and then the training and validation process is actually quite different than with traditional machine learning. And then um, the week after, we actually built the first project. This first project is kind of similar to what we did uh, in the demo here. Basically, uh, we're building our stock forecasting models. And so this will, you would learn about how to do feature selection, would learn about how to do measurement, error measurement, as well as how to do project set, set up. So that's kind of like the, the second part, the first uh, second part, which is a, the first project. The third part really is revolving around um, using NLP because so much information about different securities are, are, um, are uh, in human language, right? Not necessarily in a table that a computer could easily understand. So you understand why it's important, how it works, how to use it. And then that we end the class really is with this capstone project, which is essentially in, in our case, we're, we're gonna be scraping Wall Street bets as an example and feeding that into a model. And so each of you guys will be working on a, a project. It doesn't have to be for the same security. It doesn't have to be using the same, um, it doesn't have to be using the same um, um, types of features. But we're trying to do what we're trying to do is we're trying to enable you guys to walk out of here with a working forecast model for your security. So all the kind of assignments kind of work up towards this. So if you if you stay current with your assignments, it's not too hard to do this. Okay, so that's what the course curriculum is. I want to see if there's questions. I think there's some questions here. Um, so one of the questions is, oh, I think I think Robert already answered it. Um, yeah, let, let me let me elaborate on that a little okay. bit. So Rushi asks, uh, if I offer a live class, will I get the recorded video for references? Um, so uh, if you offer a live class, so not only are you going to get the, the recorded videos, but you're also going to get recorded videos going forward as well, right? So technology changes, things improve. Um, the one, one advantage of being part of live class is you could join this live class, right? And we've recently changed our policies as well. If you want to retake it again, there's so join the one in June, you want to retake it again in August, let's say something happened in your life, right? People have, you know, jobs or, or they're moving, whatever, right? You're more than welcome to retake it for free, right? Uh, you'll also get recordings going forward, right? So you get recordings of the classes that you took, but then also recordings going forward as well, right? So that's what happens when you take a live class. All right. Okay, great question. Okay, guys, I know we're just a little bit over here, but are there any other questions for myself or Robert that we could help answer? I know it takes a little bit of time for people to write their questions. So uh, we'll, we'll give them a little bit of time to write the questions. Uh, but Greg, I just wanna say again, great presentation. Thank you. Um, I know I took your course last time around and I, I feel like I learned a lot taking it as well. Um, and I feel like that says a lot. Um, so thank you very much for, for your time and, and all your effort. I know you care a lot about uh, the students that are in your class. And I know how much time you spend on, on helping everyone. So I hope everyone knows that, that when they take this class with Greg, not only do you get this incredibly talented person, but someone who actually cares very deeply about you coming out of this course, having something really valuable in your hands, right? So. I just want to, to say that out loud as well. Well, people are taking really appreciate that. And, and I encourage everyone to get on Discord as well. I'm on there and uh, love, love to chat with you guys. And there's a lot of other people on there as well, former students, other people um, who, you know, even other people who haven't taken the course. So it's, all, it's also a great community as well on, on Discord. Um, so we have another question here. So, so Rushi asks, um, you know, for classes and practice, do I need a specific computer steps and configuration? I feel like I could answer that, but uh, Greg, I'll let you take that. Yeah, yeah. so we, um, for the most part, uh, our development is going to be in the cloud. So we're using Google Colab, it's on Google Cloud. So there's not a lot of local, as long as you have a, you know, a decent internet connection with a web browser, you really, you're really set. You don't need much more than that. But a very good question. Great. Yeah. So, so the answer is, is it doesn't really matter what, what laptop, what computer you're on. Right. Nope, um, nope. I, I know, I know like the, the cloud-based stuff, as long as you have like a web browser, yep. right. And a good internet yep. connection, I think you're good. Right. Yep. Um, 
So the question is here. So the, the cost, uh, do you want to scroll up a little bit, Greg? So yeah, let me do cost. that. All right. So we have a few different plans here. Oh, it's, it's up at the top. Oh, sorry. Yeah, other way. <laughs> yeah, so the cost here, we have several different plans. Um, there's a, one, one more up, one more up. These are, these are bundles, right? So if we okay. want to buy them in bundles, you save a bit. The two main ones here, there's actually a third one that, should, that we should have up here as well. But the self-directed is essentially, uh, you're going to watch the, the recordings of uh, last, last cohort with Greg, right? So you're going to watch those recordings and that's 650 bucks. Uh, if you watch the live classes, the live class is really the one that, that people are most interested in. Um, I'll tell you, we sell tons and tons of these things. Um, the live class is really you're, you're with uh, Greg over Zoom. You get to ask questions. You guys have lots of workshops. Um, you're going to be uh, getting to know other students, all that sort of thing. It's very interactive. Um, it's much better than like just, you know, like, you, you know, you talk about Udemy or something like that. This is so much better because you have someone that's actually guiding you through this and you'll be able to share your screen and talk about I'm stuck here and he'll and, and Greg will be, be able to help you out. So that's what the, the whole live class is all about. That's about three grand. Uh, we also have another package that's actually not on this uh, the site right now, um, but there's uh, also... Um, a project help and tutoring plan where you get all of the above plus uh, you get some help from from the rest of our team and our developers to really make sure that that you get these things built um, uh, you know pretty much no matter what right and then down here we have the bundles uh, if you choose to buy you know uh, algorithmic trading plus machine learning both self-directed or self-directed of one and live of the other or live of both a lot of people have been buying these lately I'll tell you that much uh, they'll take the live algorithmic trading course, and then they'll take the live machine learning course right after. Uh, this has been quite popular lately as well, right? And those are the prices there. Um, we also have another question here. Um, can we take the self-paced and then take the project help tutoring plan at the next session? Would the total price be the same or would it be consideration for the self-paced? Um, yeah, so you either buy one or the other. We, we don't give discounts for if if you choose to take the self-directed uh, plan now and then you want to upgrade to the project help and tutoring, um, you're going to be paying full price for both. Uh, we don't offer discounts if you if you get uh, one and then upgrade to the other. Um, yeah. So is it recommended to take the algo or ML first or both at the same time? Any recommendations? Um, so I, I think I could take that, that uh, uh, question, Greg. Um, so... Most of our students will take the algorithmic trading class first and then the machine learning class, right? That's typically the way it's done. And the reason why uh, is because we have a lot of people that, you know, maybe don't have a ton of programming experience, right? If you're an expert coder, then this is me. You could, you could take them in either direction um, if you have a lot of programming experience. But if you're new to coding, I'd highly recommend they take the algorithmic trading class first because we'll teach you how to code in that class. So that when you're taking uh, Greg's class, which is you know a little bit more advanced, you'll be ready for it, right? Um, not to say that Greg's class is like way out there or anything like that. I've taken it; it's not it's not crazy, um, but definitely uh, the 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 order is usually uh, algo algo trading and then the ML course, and that's just to make sure you're prepared so that when when you do take the ML course, you're ready, right? Uh, again, if you have programming experience, then you can take it in another direction, right? Okay, no problem. All right. Any other questions, guys? Some good questions today. Yeah, really good questions. All right. And, and remember, guys, that this class is starting in about a week <laughs> next Thursday. So if you guys want to sign up, you really don't have a lot of time left. So make sure that you, uh, you guys sign up for that. Yeah, and I'll just again, just jump into the Discord. I'm happy to answer questions there. Um, and Robert's also on there. Um, but I definitely appreciate everyone's time today and joining in. Great questions. Any others, just drop them in there. But uh, really appreciate everyone's uh, time today. Awesome. And definitely appreciate your time, Greg. Of course. Great. So um, I, I think we could probably call it there. Um, okay. We've had a couple of last questions. We, we've given some time. Um, Guys, thank you very much for attending the webinar. It's always a pleasure having all of you on board. Um, I love this community. We keep building this up. Um, uh, again, there's going to be a survey at the end of this. Uh, make sure you answer that survey so that we can continue to improve not only these types of webinars, but continue to improve 
our entire company and all of our courses for you guys. Uh, we're very keen on feedback. I love hearing what you guys have to think and how we can improve. So please uh, fill out that survey and let me know what you think, all right? Cool, awesome. All right, well, have a good night, guys. Okay. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Robert. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye.